from MontanaSports.com. This is MTN Sports Extra. Hello everyone, my name is Carter Culver and I'm your host this week for Sports Extra. Let's dive right into all that's been happening in sports around the state. Some big college basketball news hit Montana on Wednesday as a coaching legend has called it a career. Montana State Billings men's basketball coach Mick Durham announced his retirement on Wednesday. Durham, now 66 and a predominant figure in basketball across the Treasure State for decades, is stepping away after 41 years in coaching. This past season was his 30th as a head coach, a year in which he guided MSUB to 20 wins for the first time in 17 years and a berth in the NCAA Division II West Regional for the first time since 2012. Durham spent 24 seasons at Montana State, his alma mater, including 16 as the Bobcats head coach from 1990 to 2005, where he won Big Sky Conference Coach of the Year three times. He guided MSU to the NCAA tournament in 1996. Durham accumulated 397 coaching wins and five Coach of the Year awards in his career. Another Bobcat great made quite the announcement Tuesday night, as Darian White has officially entered the transfer portal. The star point guard took to Twitter on Tuesday, thanking Bobcat Nation for the past four years, saying, quote, I want to explore the next phase of my basketball career Montana State has created for me, end quote. White earned all Big Sky first team honors during her final three seasons with Montana State and leaves the program ranked in the top ten of nine different categories for career records within the program. You know, she just uh, has impacted this game in every facet. She's... Uh, so much fun for the fans to watch. She's a heart and soul kind of kid. Um, the things that she's brought to the table since her freshman year and how she's evolved to her senior year have um, completely uh, taken this program to the next legacy. And she is a legacy. That is what she is. She's going to be a future Hall of Famer at some point. White enters the transfer portal with one year of eligibility left due to a COVID year. After the Grizz basketball season came to a close following their Big Sky Conference exit, one of their star players, Josh Bannon, decided it was time to take the next step in his basketball career. And MTN's Kyle Hansen caught up with the Australian native to recap his time at Montana. Josh Bannon has had two major goals in his basketball career, representing Australia in the Olympics and playing in the NBA. And now, Bannon is taking a big step toward achieving those lofty dreams. The three-year star for the Montana Grizzlies announced late Monday evening that he would be foregoing his remaining college eligibility to pursue a pro basketball career. It was a very hard decision. Uh, the Grizz is very special to me. Being a Montana Grizzly and having that sort of, the way that that's been my college career and I've been blessed to play here, uh, I feel very fortunate. But um, it's hard to step away from, but exciting to see what's next. Bannon's pedigree was definitely decorated before he got to UM, and the Australian has received pro basketball interest ever since his youth playing career and since he arrived in Missoula. While he loved playing college ball at Montana, the timing to take this next step felt right for him. But a big reason why he feels ready is thanks to his time in Missoula. I feel very fortunate and I, I can't speak enough to how grateful I am for what for what this school's done to me and this coaching staff. I've been privileged to play here and wear the Montana Grizzly jersey uh, for three years and they they have prepared me for this. I wasn't I wasn't prepared when I got here, but I feel I feel very prepared right now. Bannon arrived to UM mid-pandemic during his freshman year, and though the year itself was the hardest of them all, the Aussie showcased he had a high ceiling of potential. Bannon admits that season was a grind and he almost went back home, but he decided to stick it out, and the reward soon followed, including over 1,000 career points and two all Big Sky selections. I feel like now, after three years, I'm sort of, I'm leaving on the right foot. I'm leaving here knowing I put everything into it and I sort of endured some of those tougher times. I think these three years helped me to develop a lot of resilience. Um, I grew a lot as an individual, as a basketball player, but also as a person. Bannon will stay at UM through the rest of the semester and will graduate with a degree in economics in just three years. From there, he'll try to link on with an NBA summer league team before eventually working 
working his way back to compete in the National Basketball League, Australia's Pro League. But he'll cherish his time in Montana forever and take it with him to the next level. I started my career at Grizz and now I'm, I'm lucky to sort of move on to this next step, but I finish it as a Grizz and I will continue to, to brag about playing for the Montana Grizzlies and the University of Montana and representing this community, this Missoula community, because that, that's really what it's about. I feel like a Grizz for life. Reporting in Missoula, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. The curtains fell last week on what was a historic season for Montana State men's basketball after falling to Kansas State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And while it was an emotional ending for a variety of reasons, including the send off of one of the program's most influential players, this season rang in what many are now considering the golden age of Bobcat basketball. You know, first off, really proud of our team, you know, not only for this game, but the, the season that they had, uh, the adversity kind of they fought through all year and continued to compete. Despite starting out Big Sky Play sitting just above 500 after one of the program's toughest non-conference schedules in recent memory, Montana State finished the year as conference champions with a 25 and 10 record, marking consecutive 25 win seasons for the first time since 1929. However, their seven point win over Northern Arizona and the Big Sky Championship also stamped a program first by punching back to back tickets to March Madness. Just judging by the two years, you know, last year and this year, it's been a big difference you know i'm just super proud of my team and being able to flip the script from last year to this year battle flipped the script himself this season going from the big sky's top reserve in 2022 to being named the tournament's mvp while also earning first team honors i mean as a player that's who i am you know i, I love to attack the defense making sure i'll you know find the open gaps and making making sure i can get to the hoop and while this season brought new faces with the addition of three transfers, the Bobcats now say goodbye to one of the program's most decorated players in Jabril Bello. It's going to be really hard to coach, you know, a game without him. You know, he's been there since day one with me. Bello finished his career ranked in six different categories amongst the Bobcat record books, which is highlighted by his 160 career blocks, leaving as Montana State's new all-time leader. He's been the cornerstone of our program. I mean, he's all over the record books, you know, back to back champion, but that goes nowhere near like the person he is and the impact that he's had on me, on all of our, our whole program. I'm excited for his next stage in life too as a professional and then, you know, whatever he decides to do, you know, in the workplace, he's going to be a tremendous success. In Bozeman, Ashley Washburn, MTN Sports. Hey everyone, I'm in the Montana Tech Hall of Fame room and I'm not sure how well you can see it, but right here is a plaque of one of Tech's most notable former coaches, Kelvin Sampson. Now his current successor, Adam Hyatt, has said that he models his team after Sampson's and the result for the Ordiggers this season was unprecedented success. Yeah. Yeah. So coming into the season, you know, there were some unknowns, some uncertainties, right? I mean, we had four new starters, had a lot of guys playing new roles. We weren't exactly certain how quickly we were going to be able to connect, and this group really connected rapidly. Yes, this team had its deepest postseason run in program history, culminating in a trip to the national tournament quarterfinals. But let's dig a little deeper and really try to quantify what a successful campaign this was. So, here's some numbers for you. And let's start with the number 10 as in Tech's ranking in the final top 25 coaches poll this season. That number represents the highest the Ordiggers have ever been ranked and their first time ever cracking the top 10. Now how about the number 29 as in the overall number of wins Tech finished the season with. Those 29 victories, also a program high. And now here's another prime number for you, 103. That's the number of points Tech racked up in its Frontier Tournament Championship win over Providence to solidify the Ordiggers as back-to-back -back regular season and tournament champions. Now for the number two. That's the number of home national tournament games Tech won to book a trip to the final site in Kansas City for the very first time. And now for the number one. That was the tournament seeding of Tech's round of 16 opponent William Penn, who the Ordiggers stunned in overtime for one of the biggest wins in program history. Tech's run eventually came to an end in the round of eight, but what an incredible ride it was. There are seasons to remember, but this one was unforgettable. It was a lot of emotion, you know, being a, a young team, we didn't have any seniors, you know? So coming in as a young team and being able to uh, to get to the Elite Eight at the national tournament against a, a very great Ottawa team who had a bunch of six-year seniors, for me, is, is a huge accomplishment. With no seniors, Tech is primed to return its entire squad. And while the Ordiggers wrote a lengthy entry in the history books this past season, this group is determined to write another, even more memorable chapter. The bar continues to be set higher and higher. It's going to be interesting to see you know, how far we can go. But I felt like probably three or four years ago, the, the ceiling was felt like we could win a 
that conference championship and we accomplished that and now the ceilings kind of got up a little bit and we feel like we can really contend for a national championship it's first things first it's going to take a lot of commitment and a, a lot of uh, consistency and being in the present you know throughout the course of a season in order to give yourself a chance to compete but we feel like this is the group to be able to do it in view to luke shelton mtn sports coming up it's high school track and field season and we caught up with the defending class a girls champions that's next on Sports Extra. There's more action online at montanasports.com. Welcome back to MTN Sports Extra, powered by MontanaSports.com. Welcome back to Sports Extra. We have some updates on high school spring sports as they hop into action and get their seasons underway. In 2022, the Whitefish girls brought home the Class A state title for track and field. Now, they're looking to repeat the feat led by their dynamic duo of juniors, Brooks Detuni and Haley Ells. This is an incredible group of girls. They're really hardworking. They're a great cohesive unit, great leadership. You know, those are all qualities that, that lead to the success they've had. And they've, man, they've worked their butts off and they've earned absolutely everything they've gotten out of this. And after finishing first in the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and second in the 400 meter as only a sophomore, Zatuni credits her success to something more than just herself. Training as hard as I can, but also like to keep myself just mentally like good throughout the season. I just kind of give everything to God. Just I always run for God. I love to like run for something greater than myself. When it comes to the leadership they bring, Coach Beckwith knows he couldn't ask for a better duo. They're both leaders on the track, during workouts, in other sports as well, and they're, they're great students. Uh, they're, they're just all around pretty awesome kids. They're, they're a great example for our younger kids. And their leadership is on full display when it comes to welcoming the newest freshmen to the team. Being there for them as like a friend, also like a leader, but not just on the track and like during the sport, just like at school if they have a question about school or just like life in general, like I, I just want to be there for them to just like talk them through whatever is like going on in their minds. When it comes to reflecting on last year's state title, Zatuni knows there's no greater feeling. It showed that all of our hard work paid off, like everyone's working hard and it's just like brought everyone together and now and like it was really exciting and fun to see like everyone happy and just like holding that first place thing for everyone. Els who led the team in individual points with 30 last year at state couldn't be more grateful for the track community and team atmosphere. All in all it's just a team effort like you didn't win state for your team and I just think it's really big like idea to think about just like being there together rather than just being there on top by yourself. With most of their top runners returning this year, the Whitefish girls will be looking to defend their title and repeat as Class A champions. Hey everyone, Luke Shelton out at Three Legends Stadium where high school baseball was supposed to make its debut this week. But judging from this scene behind me, it's not looking promising. But for first year program Butte Central, they're still staying busy and trusting that eventually they'll finally get to take this field. 
We're feeling pretty good, you know, we'd love to be outside, but we're, you know, we're happy to have the facilities that we do around here. But uh, we're just itching really to get at it. We've had, you know, three games canceled already and we just want to get to work. Montana Spring is currently doing its thing, meaning Butte Central is still waiting to get its first outdoor practice and play its first game. Being cooped up inside isn't ideal, but first year head coach Richie O'Brien said he's still seeing steady progress in this team. It's no fun being in the gym, but I, I'm, I'm watching them get better every single day in here and that's what it's all about and you know we, we got some kids that haven't haven't touched a field since they were you know playing maybe nine or ten year old 11 12 year old but just watching it come back has been a lot of fun the experience level of this group is as varied as spring weather in Montana some of these kids have never played the game before others like Rye Doherty were part of the Butte Miners championship run last summer as Butte secured district state and regional titles we have literally every level of play we had some kids come out just because they wanted to have a good time and they haven't been out here forever and everything in the middle we got some very young kids and then all the way up to rye who's you know he's an elite baseball player in montana oh i love it you know so everyone's kind of looking to me to coach them up a little bit give them some tips and just be a good role model be positive for them and it's really fun actually because you know it sounds corny but they look up to you and i like it it motivates me to help them and keep my temper and do as best as I can. The Maroons may feel in limbo right now, but they'll have a lot to look forward to this season, including a crosstown matchup against Butte High. It'll be really fun. You know, I'm looking forward to it because they're my buddies. It's all good nature. So yeah, it'll be really fun. Yeah, we're just getting ready for the season, waiting to get out on that field. We're ready. In Butte, Luke Shelton, MTN Sports. Browning coaching legend. Daniel Conley has decided to call it a career after 30 years coaching basketball and MTN's Dante Williams caught up with the man himself to hear him reflect on his career and the community he served. After a combined 30 years of coaching in the district, Browning head coach Dan Conley has decided that it is time to hang up his whistle. After assisting for most of his career, Conley took over the program six years ago hoping to build on what the former coaches had already done. Uh, one of the things is uh, just continue what uh, the foundation at Ray started and, and then Mark continued and I wanted to, to continue that, you know, uh, compete for championships every year, uh, uh, be right up there in uh, top of the conference, uh, teach these kids life lessons, uh, make sure I, all of my kids graduate. Conley emphasized that it was his job to help develop these boys into young men. Uh, Coach Conley is one of the great coaches that Browning has um, coached here. The biggest life lesson he taught me is how to be a man and work hard. I feel like like he really like brought me out of my shell too. He allowed me to like you know be a leader on the team and be play to my full potential for real. As Conley looks back at the last six years, he can retire knowing that they had plenty of success. I think I I. I Accomplished all my goals other than uh, we never did win a state title in my tenure, uh, but we won some divisional titles. Uh, we won the conference uh, four out of the six years that I was the coach. Leaving is hard, especially when you've impacted so many people, but Conley knew it was time to step away. You know, uh, I grew up here in Browning. I've lived here my entire life. Uh, I played sports here. I played basketball here. Uh, you know, I've, I've always wanted to give back, and, and I feel like I've done that. Uh, but now I think it's time for me to kind of take a break. I've been doing this, like I said, for 30 years. Uh, it's, it's time to spend some more time with my family. We would like to wish Coach Conley a happy retirement. In Browning, I'm Dante Williams with MTN Sports. Coming up, spring ball is back for the Cats and Grizz. As they begin gearing up for next year, we caught up with some players for both teams to hear their thoughts as practices are getting underway. That's next on Sports Extra. There's more action online at montanasports.com.
Welcome back to MTN Sports Extra, powered by MontanaSports.com. While fall camp is still months away, vacation time has already wrapped up and the Grizz are well into spring ball. MTN's Kyle Hansen caught up with one budding star for the Grizz offense. Depth is always a must-have in football at every position, and the Montana Grizzlies were in need of that at offensive line last season. They didn't have to look far to fill that need, as before fall camp began, the Grizz coaching staff switched Journey Grimsrud from the defensive line over to offense, and the learning curve quickly began. It wasn't new. Totally, but it was a change, that's for sure. The Huntley Project product was thrown into the fire as he learned his new position at right guard. While he had experience on the O-line from high school, he still had plenty to figure out. And it was a crash course in the fall. It was rough and I kind of felt like I had a time crunch just in case I had to play, which ended up happening. So I'm glad I took it serious and the coaches are just phenomenal. and. Those upperclassmen who helped me out and told me pretty much everything, even during the game, so it worked out. Grimsrud was tasked with putting on about 30 pounds to his body to get bigger, but combating nerves was also an obstacle. But in the end, it proved to be the right move at the right time. When the season got underway, UM's offensive line dealt with injuries midway through the year. So Grimsrud got the chance to play early and eventually slid into the starting role and never let go as he started six games for the Grizzlies last season. Meant a lot for sure. Growing up, you know, trying to get to the college level and then getting here and then working your way up and then finally getting a shot and it kind of pays off. It means it means a lot for sure. Head coach Bobby Houck said Grimsrud had the size and athleticism to make the change and he took to the position once he got his feet under him. It's so different technically and then you've got to learn the offense too. So the, the learning curve's really steep. First couple weeks were really uphill for him. But then once he settled in and knew what he was doing, then it became understand the game plan, know the calls that are on the call sheet, and keep refining technique. And he's done that throughout. You know, watching him this spring, you wouldn't know he wasn't a veteran at the position. With spring football winding down for the Grizzlies, Grimsrud has used this time to hone his craft and continue to grow heading into next season. Get my footwork down and be confident. I just want to be able to play as confident as I can and have no stress during these games because that was the issue last year. But no, keep getting better and being confident. Reporting in Missoula, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. On and off the field at Montana State, the linebackers are a tight-knit group. Danny Yulila Kepa beamed when explaining how much of a family they've become. It's great. Yeah, I love all the guys in there. So we, we, we've brought in uh, one transfer, Cole, and he, he's like a brother already. Just really good. As a group, what they are honing in on to get better throughout spring ball is simple. Really just knowing our job, knowing where to be, our alignment, assignment, just getting everyone fine-tuned into that. Some of the best talent this program has seen has come through this position group in recent years. Despite losing some key pieces, the linebackers have continuously stepped up and filled the shoes of those past standouts. You know, um, that's an important position for us to continue to move forward. You know, we move forward um, in our own right from Troy two years ago. We, move, we have to move forward from Callahan's departure. Um, and I think we have the, the guys to do it. We the players believe in their depth as a core as well. I, I feel like we have good depth. We just need uh, guys to step up and I feel like we got guys stepping up. We got, we got Neil Daly, he, he's working real hard and, and McCade, so. And fellow linebacker Nolan Askelson will wear the legacy number 41 this season. It honors Montana's status as the 41st state admitted to the union and is given to one senior every year from the Treasure State. It's an honor for the Montana guys, so. Yeah, we'll, we always be talking about stuff like that, so it's cool. You can catch all the linebackers in action during the Sunny Holland Classic on April 22nd. In Bozeman, Grace Lawrence, MTN Sports. Coming up, a Montana State Rodeo alum who recently suffered life-threatening injuries is now receiving help from a fellow cowboy as he begins his road to recovery. That's next on Sports Extra. Download our free app and take MTN Sports with you. Just search Montana Sports in the...
Welcome back to MTN Sports Extra, powered by MontanaSports.com. Former Montana State rodeoer Caleb Berquist suffered an accident while wrangling cows on his family ranch that left him with serious injuries. MTN's Ashley Washburn caught up with a fellow cowboy, Bo Cooper, who's begun helping raise money to fund his recovery. A controversial call rocked the rodeo world earlier this month that was supposed to be the breakout moment for Canadian tie-down roper Bo Cooper, which not only denied him the Rodeo Houston title, but also a life-changing grand prize of $50,000. However, despite what maybe was one of the lowest moments of his young career, he's now using it for good by helping out a fellow cowboy. You know, I just felt, you know, a little wrong about, uh, you know, taking other people's money. And so I just felt like I could use it for a greater purpose. And so um, being able to pass it on to Caleb and, and his family and let them use it, you know, felt like the right thing to do. On the same weekend, Bo was stripped of a first place finish at the Houston Rodeo after a line judge flagged him for breaking the barrier on what many believe was actually an equipment malfunction. One of Montana State's former rodeo stars was fighting for his life. Caleb Berkwist, who won the men's all around last year in the Big Sky region, was in a ranching accident while trying to wrangle some yearling cows that left him with a ruptured knee, crushing his T12 vertebrae and no movement below his ribs. His dad, Shane, was saying that he's starting to get some feeling back in his lower half. No, no real movement yet, but uh, he's starting to get some feeling, so that's a good sign. While Bo has never actually met or spoken to Caleb before, he's a big reason why the rodeo community has now raised more than $60,000. That's because after a GoFundMe was initially started for the Canadian Roper to make up for losing out on grand prize money, he's now redirecting those funds to Caleb's medical bills. You know, that's kind of the cowboy ethics, you know, that everybody's got everybody's backs out here. And it's pretty cool to see all that support, you know, kind of feels like, you know, the support that I had Sunday and Monday morning, you know. So I'm glad that all those people were able to pull together for, for the real right thing, you know. Montana State will be holding its annual spring rodeo April 13th through 16th, which head coach Kyle Whitaker says they do plan on doing something in honor of Caleb. But in the meantime, there is a link to his GoFundMe on our website. In Bozeman, Ashley Washburn, MTN Sports. That wraps up Sports Extra this week. Be sure to tune in next week to stay in the loop for any and all Montana sports updates, as well as online at montanasports.com. That's all from us, and have a great weekend, everyone.